Hi, I'm Josh Brown here with Michael Batnick. I want to talk about Michael Batnick's new post, I Remember When. Stick around, we'll see what's going on. Michael, when you told me about your idea for this post, I loved it because I've had a thousand, maybe 10,000 conversations with people and uh, talking about the market, their portfolio, clients, pr prospective clients, and almost everyone brings up something from their formative first 10 years of investing. And that conversation always starts with, I remember when blank. Yeah, it's not like implied, like they literally say those words. Those are the words. Yeah. And like, so they'll say, I remember when the dot-com bubble blew up. I remember when interest rates were 18% in the early 80s. And there's nothing wrong with having those remembrances, but the point that you're making that I wanna ask you about is um, how severely those moments in time get anchored to. And people almost like can't let it go because it happened at such an early stage of their development as investors, and they see signs of that thing happening everywhere forever. Yeah, so like uh, the GFC would affect a 65-year-old a lot differently than a 25-year-old. The great financial crisis. Yeah. Um, right, so... But I guess, maybe I didn't put this in the post because there's just too much, like you, you gotta draw the line somewhere, but I don't think that it's always the first 10 years. I think particularly if there's like a shock in the first 10 years or something really like out of the ordinary. Something very memorable. Yeah. So part of that is like the availability bias. It's the thing that's the most easy to recall. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you, it, everything that, that you're talking about now, that gets muddled into the mix. Totally. Um, but specifically, so I think you read a book where it was talking about whatever baseball team was winning when you were 10 years old. Yeah. That's it. You're a fan forever. Like yeah. if that was your so, team. So they broke it down like eight-year-old boys were the most impressionable for sports. Um, for politics, I think it was – in your middle 40s, something like that. But like certain events, just, just when you're born is so important. So when you're born has a huge impact on the market experience that you have. And one of the examples you gave, somebody born in 1946, they kind of come of age in, or, or somebody that gets into their investing years in 1946. So they, ex what what's that experience like versus the experience, let's say that someone investing now might might, might have? I mean, it, yeah, so somebody in 1946, a dollar grew to $4.68 over the next 10 years. So Invest in the S&P. They quadrupled their money. Yeah, and there was there was very little turbulence versus somebody that started their investing career in 19, 1966 at the top, unknowingly, experienced two bear markets. Their money grew, grew by just 3%. So that stays with them forever. So you, all right, so you come of age, you start investing in 1966, the tail end of a very long bull market. And then before you know it, you're in the 70s, um, the nifty 50 stocks blow up, you have oil embargoes, you have massive inflation. So how could you ever shake that feeling? Because it's so impactful and it just, it, it, it almost kills you as an investor. So the inflation of the 70s seems to be a big one okay. that we still hear from our clients. They remember the high interest rates and the high inflation and the gas lines. And Neil Kashkari was recently asked about uh, how the GFC left scars. He said, actually, it was the scars from the 70s that might be more uh, a bigger driver of like decision making. So in the late 1970s, so there was a three and a half year period where gold was up 700 so percent. Stocks have never gone on one like that. But no. if they did, the Dow— 700 percent in three years? In like three and a half years. It's unbelievable. So if, the, if, the, if stocks did that, the Dow would be over 200,000 by— by twenty right. uh, by twenty twenty two or something like that. Right. So if that happened, how would that affect the way that you view stocks going forward? It would change you forever. You would be bullish for the rest forever. Of, for the rest of your life. You would be a permanent. Bull. Conversely, imagine we saw the Great Depression today. So right. by twenty twenty two, the Dow is below three thousand. Would it matter what happened next? So let's say the Dow went from twenty five thousand down to three thousand, and then up to a hundred thousand. That wouldn't matter. Yeah. The fact that it went from twenty five down to three will stay with you forever. So I think it's not a coincidence that most of the people who were like inflation hawks and in 2010 um, were screaming that the Fed is about to destroy the world. They had their formative experiences with inflation in the 70s. Yeah, they remember, and, I've never seen inflation. I'm not afraid of it. Right. I mean, I understand what it is, but it, it didn't ravage my, my life. Right. So then, so as I was reading your post, I was thinking about my own experience. 
So I got into the industry in the late 90s. The first thing I saw was the dot-com boom and bust. That is literally imprinted on my, like my life. I don't think that I will ever see a market again where I don't have those feelings from what I witnessed because that was formative for me to watch an insane amount of money be made in one, in one year and then the next year see it all taken back. So I definitely have that as part of me and I can't do anything about it. It's when I was born. It's when I started investing. Um, your experience is a little different. I think that you kind of came into the market at a time of massive volatility and you saw a lot of trading going on around you, right? We're talking, what were we talking about, 2009, 2010? Yeah, 2010 is when I started trading. 2010. So what was going on then is nobody believed that there was any uptrend. The first things that I was buying was FAZ, the three times short bear, uh, uh, the bank stocks. Right, and why were you but buying they, it? Because everyone else was. No, but they were going up. Yeah. And I was shorting them with triple leverage. And I was like, what the hell's going on? I thought banks were going to... Right. So All right, so, so now think about an investor who started within the last 10 years. Um, their formative experience is pretty much a joyride. Yep. Um, with the exception of 2011 and then some sparse moments sprinkled throughout and then this year, they really have not experienced anything approaching average volatility. Forget about high volatility. They just It hasn't been a feature of the market. And when it becomes a feature of the market, it's going to seem completely aberrant to them, right? It's, it's going to be like, Whoa, 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 whoa. What, what is this about? I haven't made money in six months. Um, does that have a big impact on the way that those people allocate their assets and build portfolios? Or I mean, I th we'll see. I think so. I think it has to. Um, all right. So what would be your message to people then if they're thinking about their own situation and they know and they become aware after reading your post Oh, I have that bias because of blank. I mean, everybody does. I think that's the point with all of these biases is that like they infect all of us. But becoming aware of it's not enough. I don't think so. Because so I wrote something like the future. It doesn't have to look like your past. But so what? Like that's you're still going to you're still yeah. going to feel that way. So when we talk to clients and they they have this one issue that it's like it's something that they can't let go. And so maybe bonds I are mean, a good example. There are there are certain people that we have the same conversations over and over with. And it's always based on us on, on an experience that they had. Yeah. And I think that that's it's, just, it. I, rem just I remember when the mortgage cost uh, 17% or 18%. When I used to be getting 9% of my bond, whatever it is. I remember when I was getting 9% interest on treasury. Well, and so, tough. Right. We're not, we're, that's, we're not, that's not where we are today. That we was then, only, this is now. Yeah, we, you could only invest in the market that you have for better and for worse. So right. I think it's just a constant repetition of it's not even education. It's just like communicating. Right. Um, are you a subscriber to Live from the Compound? I am not. Okay. You should subscribe. Everyone watching should, should subscribe. Hit the button right below your, uh, your screen. And if you have thoughts on, on this concept, and I'm sure you do, are there biases that you're anchoring toward? Are there moments that you remember that infect all of your thinking about whatever is to happen in the future? Let us know. Tell us what you think. We'll talk to you soon.